Hey everyone, Morgan here. So we are on page 12 of the stoichiometry outlined for honors chemistry. And what we're going to be doing is talking a little bit about the experiment that you did yesterday. So you had a beaker into which you put some baking soda or sodium hydrogen carbonate, about three grams if you followed the instructions. And then you added an awful lot of hydrochloric acid. You mixed it, it bubbled, you added more, it bubbled more, and you kept adding the HCl drop by drop until the solution quit bubbling. And what that told you, that it had stopped bubbling, was that the hydrochloric acid was the excess reactant. You added until the reaction stopped. And you probably added even more after that. So we know just from our observational evidence that HCl is definitely the excess reactant. So why is the sodium hydrogen carbonate or the baking soda the limiting reactant? Well, you could say it in kind of a sarcastic way by saying because HCl is the excess that you know or you could say because you used it all up, it quit bubbling, okay? Now, let's talk about numbers a little bit. If you started out with the 3.00 grams of NaHCO3, you should have gotten 2.09 grams of sodium chloride. Now, that probably didn't happen, okay? There are a few different ways that this can go wrong, Qu quite a few really, all right? But first, think about, was it dry? It probably was not completely dry, which means you have excess mass, which is due to the water that's still in the beaker. You also had splatter. A lot of the sodium chloride would shoot up and collect on that watch glass that you covered the beaker with, and some of it falls off. So you really don't have any way to know for sure whether you have a higher than predicted yield or a normal or a less than predicted yield. And you might think, oh, okay, my numbers are perfect. I got the exact amount I was supposed to except some of that could have been water and not all sodium chloride, okay? Now, if you saw that it was wet, you know that you have excess water and that's gonna send the mass of sodium chloride too high, okay? All right, so that's a little bit about what was going on with that, okay? Now, this introduces us to the idea that you had too much HCl for the amount of baking soda that you started with. HCl is the excess reactant, and the NaHCO3, the baking soda, is the limiting reactant. Let's think about that in terms of something that's a little easier to understand, making bicycles. So I can write a balanced chemical equation, believe it or not. One frame plus two wheels yields one bicycle. Now, if I have 20 frames, how many bikes could I make? Well, I'm going to give you two answers to that. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. One frame for one bike. So in a sense, 20 bikes is one possible answer. The other possible answer is none because you don't have any wheels. Now what if I have 30 wheels? Well, that's a one to two or two to one, depending upon which way you're looking at it in the equation ratio. I could make 15 bikes if I had 30 wheels, as long as I had enough frames, okay? So what if I put these two scenarios together? I've got 20 frames, I've got 30 wheels, which one of these is my limiting reactant? Wheels for sure. Because I run out of wheels bef 
before I am done with all of the frames. So the frames must be the excess reactant. I have extra frames in this process. How many? Well, if I'm making 15 bikes and I have 20 frames, 20 minus 15 is 5, or I have 5 frames left over. Okay? Now this was really easy to understand because we're not dealing with mass. A different way to think about this in comparison to what we did up here at the top of the page is I don't tell you how many frames you have, but I tell you the mass of all the frames. You have 20 kilograms of frames. So you have to now go back and figure out what is the mass of one frame and convert 20 kilograms into a number of frames. That's the same thing that we're doing when we take the mass of the frames, convert it to molecules. Get the idea? It's moles. These are based on mole ratios or molecular ratios. So if I have mass of baking soda and I change it into moles of baking soda, then I can start to do direct comparisons. These are easy direct comparisons because we're not dealing with masses. We're dealing with the number of particles present. And like we've always been emphasizing, everything really depends upon the number of particles present. Okay, thank you for tuning in. This is Morgan signing off.